Here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Find out our telephone number. You're going to need it. One eight hundred five eight hundred talk. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Oh, many of you angrily sent me something that appeared on MSN.com. By the way, MSN.com isn't like that. That the like the the stepsister of Google and Yahoo, MSN.com. I mean, remember they used to charge you for that? They used to call it the Microsoft Network, MSN Microsoft Network. Is anybody paying for that anymore? <laughs> but apparently somehow, I don't know if it's because of MSNBC or what, apparently there are some of you out there who, uh, who still read it. Many of you, apparently, and... Uh, Many of you were angry about what I'm about to read to you. So I'll read it to you, and then we will get your reaction to it here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's called The Wife's Bill of Rights. And it is written like the constitutional bill of rights here it is it has a preamble we the wives of america love being married to the husbands of america we know we have our faults but with our ever morphing roles these days there's a lot of pressure on us to be superhuman we care for our families manage the home keep ourselves attractive, and even bring home our shares of the bacon. We know we sometimes lash out, but we really do want to live happily ever after with you. Our mutual acknowledgement of these amendments can go a long way toward achieving that. Oh, we haven't gotten the good stuff yet. Here we go. Amendment one. We have the right to dislike your buddies. We know it's important for you to have your guy friends, but you should know by now that we're not turned on by your stories of the good old days at college, your sexual exploits, or which relief pitcher the Red Sox should train. Disappear for a while and be boys. It's okay. Go chug beer and high five. Is that what we do? I've hung out with the boys. I don't remember doing any of that. But please don't expect us to be happy when your friends come over and put their feet on our coffee tables or leave their beer cans on the floor. By the way, when we lived alone without you, you insufferable bitch, nobody ever complained about that stuff. It was never a problem. Amendment 2. <laughs> Get this one. We have the right to experience PMS in all its glory. Either give us our space or accept the consequences. We know it's unfair, but some of us just can't rein it in. You knew that before you married us. Well, there's your lesson right there, boys. You see, before you married her, when she had PMS, she stayed home. She told you she was tired or she didn't feel like going out or she had to get up early the next day or she made something up. She never told you it was PMS. She never told you she was on the rag. So you just found other things or other women to do until she was available again, remember? Now that you signed the contract and you decided to have her 24-7, now you get her in all her PMS glory. Was it really worth it, boys? 
Uh, this piece goes on. She says, we may shout, cry, be little, act irrationally. It lasts a few days each month, so please deal with it. Or even better, you pussies out there, bring home dinner, clear the dishes, and give us a big hug. <laughs> F you. <laughs> you know, I had one woman, and she knows who she is. On my Microsoft Outlook, I used to uh, mark my calendar every 28 days. It said PMS hell, and it had five days blocked out. And I made sure to plan as many activities for myself as possible on those days. I just did not want to see her on those five days. That was it. No explanation necessary. One day she finally saw this. She finally like was looking at the computer screen and there was PMS hell. She said, what is that? And I told her. She was horrified. Essentially, I told her the same thing. F you. Amendment three. We have the right. Listen to this. What kind of ball buster wrote this piece? We have the right to demand you fin demand you finish a household job. I'll tell you what kind of job we have a right to demand that you finish. There's a job you better get done. She says we're not your mothers and we loathe having to act like them. Oh yeah, sure you do. If you wash the dishes, do them all. And clean the sink, too. Don't just bag the trash. Take it outside to the bin. If you start a load of laundry, put it in the dryer and fold it, too. We don't like nagging any more than you like carrying it. That whole paragraph sounded like nagging. Now, can I tell you something? I live alone in a spotless, spotless house. In fact, I've had quite a bit of company the last few days. I live in a spotless house. Dishes are done. Trash is out. Laundry done. Folded. And I didn't need any bitch telling me what to do. In fact, I'm much more efficient without the bitch in the way. <laughs> this just reminds me of why I live alone. Amendment 4. We have the right to an honest answer to what's wrong. We admit guilt in this area, too, but nothing says nothing. If we ask, it's not because we're trying to make casual conversation. It's because we love you and need an honest answer. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because you know what happens then? Then you start arguing with us, and we don't want that. We don't want you nagging, crying, screaming, stamping your little feet. So if there's something wrong and it's going to cause World War III, we're not telling you. That's it. Don't like it? You know where the door is, sweetie. Use it. Get the F out of my house. By the way... I, 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 the nerve of a woman putting this in an article. How many times have you been with a woman? You say, uh, hey, what are you thinking about over there? Nothing. What's wrong? Nothing. You sure? Yeah. Well, that's great. Come over here and give me a hug. I don't feel like it right now. Why not? No reason. Just, just don't feel like it. So let me understand. Nothing is wrong, but you don't feel like having any physical contact with me. Well, if something were wrong, uh, well, what difference would it make to you? <laughs> How many of us had that conversation, that exact conversation? So, uh, please. Uh, she finishes up this amendment to her Bill of Rights by saying, Yes, this could open up a can of worms, but remember when we dated and talked about everything? Yes, I remember when we dated and talked about everything. Those were the days when everything I said was funny. All of my opinions were right on. Everything I did was cute and clever. Until I signed this miserable contract to live with you 24-7. Suddenly everything I do is wrong. Everything I say is stupid or juvenile. Everything I like is in bad taste. And every word out of my mouth starts a fight. 
And I know I'm talking directly to you listening to the program. I know. I know I am. <laughs> Amendment 6. We have the right to clean air. You may think it's funny, masculine, or natural to pass gas anywhere at any time you please. But when the smell drives us to gag, it's uncool. There is something inherently wrong in the relationship if you must walk over to us and fart. Or if you intentionally set a bad example for the kids. We fart too, but we do so discreetly for a reason. By the way, all women do not fart discreetly. Does the phrase Dutch oven mean anything to you ladies? Yeah. You may not like our potpourri and scented candles, but they're infinitely better than toxic and flammable methane. Jesus. Amendment 7, we have the right to keep and bear tons of girly bathroom products, which you will pay for. I added the which you will pay for part, but come on, we all know who's paying for that stuff. You have your tools, so do we. These items are expensive and to be used sparingly. It brings no joy to see our $15 bath bar shrunk down to the size of a quarter after two passes on your chest and legs. By the way, if you're getting a $15 bath bar, the next thing you're getting is a change of address. I'll fill it out for you. <laughs> Make this real easy. Amendment 8... We have the right to speak to our girlfriends every day about whatever we want, whenever we want. Please don't eavesdrop or criticize. We know you're not that interested in gossip or psychoanalytical interpretations of why some people do what they do. So we turn to our like-minded female friends for instant gratification. Yes, we do talk about you a lot. It helps us work through issues. This keeps us happy, sane, and usually off your case. By the way, if you need to talk to your girlfriend about me, you should move in with your girlfriend. Period. You could talk about uh, your ex-boyfriend <laughs> or your ex-husband. Tonight, somebody's talking about me as their ex. And I think they can say whatever they want now that they're gone. I only have one thing to say about any of the exes. It's been nice being alone after you left. <laughs> it's been wonderful. Amendment 9. This is outrageous stuff here. We have the right to flirt. Not the kind that makes you jealous. Well, if it wasn't the kind that makes us jealous, why would it be an issue? But the healthy practice of connecting with another person on a non-sexual level. Of course, darling. You think it's a non-sexual level, but every guy you wink at thinks you want to jump into the sack with him. And as guys, we know it. She says, your light banter is fun, quick-witted, and encouraging to our self-esteem. We don't want your self-esteem to be encouraged. We do not want that. It might even remind you of why you feel in love with us. Why would you flirting with someone else remind us why we fell in love with you? You know what would remind me of uh, why I fell in love with you? You'd shut your trap. And she says here, if it gets us a smoking deal on that new furnace or a free stay for the family at a million dollar ski chalet, so much the better. <sighs> Jesus. And finally, Amendment 10, we have the right to foreplay. <laughs> a fine bottle of wine, soft, but by the way, the more foreplay you need, the less she likes sex with you. Because I want to tell you something, uh, uh, speaking of a man now who is not married, not living with anybody, and who has been free the better part of the last several years to do whatever he wants... There are women who just want to F me hard and then go home. There are women who will come over and ride me like a pony and then get the hell out. There are women who get into the backseat of my car and do amazing things. No bottles of wine, no candles, no Lionel Richie music or Kenny G music. None of that. 
they just want to F you. That's when you've got real chemistry. If I have to get a what she calls a fine bottle of wine, like most women would even know what that is, soft music, deep looks into each other's eyes, compliments, holding hands, cuddling. These are all forms of foreplay, and we insist on them. Please don't reach for our crotch or breasts and expect us to melt into a porn kitten. It didn't work when we met. It most certainly doesn't work now. That's why we know we made a mistake in marrying you. Sure, we women are strong and independent. No, you're not. <laughs> if you were independent, you wouldn't have goaded us into getting married to you. And appreciate an inspired quickie when the moment strikes. Yeah, that rare time when you're horny, like once a year. But we also have an inner soft spot the size of Texas that needs squeezing and cherishing. We appreciate you more when you think about how it feels to us rather than how it feels to you. Well, boys, you've heard the wife's Bill of Rights. Does it make you want to run out and get married? And ladies, does this stuff make sense to you? Tom Likas. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for telling in. We are talking about the wife's Bill of Rights. A stupid column on MSN.com. Well, well, well. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Courtney on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Yes, Courtney. Yes. That, that women's bill of rights thing, it's just, it's a complete load of crap. I'm sorry. I'm sure that there are women out there that may actually feel like but probably they're not with a man. And if they are with a man, he's not a very happy man. And if you live in the real world with a real man, it just doesn't go that way. That's just my opinion. Now, any woman who's not attracted to me enough to have sex with me without my having to... Uh uh, to put a Dave Cos CD on and to have to sit there with uh, flowers and an expensive bottle of wine and and give her a, a three hour uh, back rub, uh, <laughs> um, so, I am out. <laughs> that just sounds so um, unrealistic to me. I mean, is she serious? <laughs> do you know how many women like that are out there? Do you know how many women tell you we're not going to do anything until you give me a back rub? <laughs> My back is the last thing I'm worried about. You yeah, rubbing, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. You want? <laughs> we're concerned about getting your front rubbed. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, but, I mean, but we're going to have sex, right? Why but that's the point. This is a filibuster by women who don't really want to have sex with us in the first place. Well, then you're with the wrong woman. Well, that's, that's my point. Well, Anyone who doesn't like getting into the sack and banging one out <laughs> or squeezing one off, I'm out. Oh, well, you know what? I, I'm with you. That's all I can say. That's just the dumbest thing I think I've ever heard in my whole entire life. I mean, there are good men out there that if they want to meet flowers, fine. They're just going to die later. You want to buy me wine? I, I get a headache. I'm not really into that. Let's just get to it So, because I can go to bed and i got to get up and go to work in the morning. That's kind of my philosophy. Yeah, let's just get to it. Let's just bang one out here. That's That's kind of my deal, but... I, I mean, and I think I'm a pretty sophisticated woman. I think I'm a realist. And then I think, yeah, I think so. Sounds good to me, Courtney. All right. Well, thanks for letting me voice my opinion. I appreciate it. Thank you. Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Diamond Tom Likas. How you doing? Doing okay. Uh, well, Tommy, you know, I, every bill of right you just read, I, it hits home for me. But I'm going to, there's one I really want to talk about is the sport play thing because like a couple of years back, I had an accident with uh, four gallons of paint in my man part, so they don't always work when I need them. To. <laughs> so my urologist put me on Cialis like last week, and it had been a while. So I'm like, you know, so you know, the first night I took one, and then I'm, I'm feeding the wife, you know, some margaritas and stuff, and things are going pretty well. Well, in the middle of trying to get to the main business. I said, I don't even remember what I said, but she got disgusted and she said, get off me. So I walk around with, you know, I even watch like a, she DVRs the view every day and I even tried watching that to get it down, but it wouldn't work. So the next day it happens, I said something, she got mad, no dice. So 
third day. And I only have a three-day sample, you know what I mean? And uh, so I wasted three pills of Cialis on nothing because I said one sentence that just bugged the hell out of her and she wouldn't put out. And I'm like, this is the only time it's going to work. So it's, every time, Tom, every time something like that happens, it just drives me crazy, though. Because it's like, well, what am I supposed to do with this thing? And have you told her how angry and upset you are? Yeah. You, you know, and I, one thing I told her was, like, I said, you know, there's five good reasons why I married you. I said two are on your chest, one one's in your crotch, and the other's on your behind. And she said, well, what's the last one? I said, oh, well, you're funny sometimes. That put me on suspension for, like, two weeks now, so. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> she calls it being vulgar. I call it uh, lovingly joking, you know, but Tommy, I mean, you just, guys just don't get married. You can't win. You just can't. Win. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like, it, Tom, one other thing that really just bugs the hell out of me, though, is like, say I even put on like keeping up with the Kardashians and hit mute just so I can look at uh, the girl with the big ass and the sex tape. Yeah. So she's like, I'm not watching this. Oh, and she's like, that's disrespectful to me. And then, <laughs> oh. and like, I'm a, I, I watch professional wrestling on Monday night. And, you know, John Cena comes out. She's like, there is absolutely nothing wrong with him. And I said, yeah, there is. He's not me. She goes, oh, yeah, you keep thinking that. And, I mean, so she'll sit and just watch this and drool. But if I watch Keep It Up With The Kardashians or even, like, Deal or No Deal, I'm looking at the model. She's like, what are you doing? That's disrespectful. Like, no two-way streets, just one way. Now, Brian, you are, I see here, 27, and your life is already over. Is that right? Not completely. I'm, I, she keeps threatening to leave, and I'm, I'm figuring one day it should, might happen. Oh, know? my! she's threatening. <laughs> Oops. If she's no, threatening to leave, don't like a gift horse in the mouth. By the way, how many kids do you have? Oh, I can't have them after that accident. So none. None? Oh, my none. God. There's no reason to stay. I know. Why are you still there? Well, I've called before. She's Spanish. She's, I'm the guy with the Spanish wife. And, like, you know, despite some of the things, a lot of the things that bugged the hell out of me, I mean, I can see a lot of good things. And, like, right now the scale's balanced at 50 50. But it gets sometimes in the things really just, uh, Bug the hell out of me, Tom. They really do. You're killing me, Larry. Tell me about it. Thank All right, you blow me up, Tom. I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Omar on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Long time without talking to you, pops. Thank you I so much. I, you know what, I, I, I tuned in like halfway through these amendments and all and whatnot. I think they're the biggest load of crap I've ever heard, especially the one where it says that we need to finish one household job. I finish a household job when she can finish an intellectual and substantial conversation with me that has something to do about our relationship. How's that? I'll go ahead and finish that job when she can finish the conversation without slamming the door or getting upset of me throwing out some facts. And I got to agree, the only job they need to finish is that one. <laughs> and, and that's about it. You know what, honey, you look prettier when your mouth is full. <laughs> that's right. You know the slogan of the Tom Likas show, right? Oh, yes. Do you know what it is? No, I do not. You just I, watch I'll your go. mouth. We're on the air. What? Jesus Christ! It's every goddamn caller. Stop it! I am. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is the radio. You can't say that word on the radio. I am so sorry, Tom. I am so sorry. Anyway, you do know the slogan of the Tom Likas show, don't you? I. It's been a while since I've heard your dad repeat it for me. All right. All right. It, it may sound familiar to you. If it doesn't get all over your face, get out of my place. From Hollywood, the Tom Like is showing one 800 800 talk Thank you for tuning in. We're talking about an article 
A hundred people at least sent to this program today. Called the Wife's Bill of Rights from MSN.com. Getting your reaction to it at 1-800-5800-866. Christopher on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tom. Hi. I've been listening to your show for about a month now. Yeah. And I've been married for about three. You've been what for about three? Married. You got married three months ago. How old are you? Good. You're effing stupid. Yeah. I'll buy that. How do I get out of it? How do I get out of this? How do I go about breaking the news? <laughs> Why not just man up? Man up? Man up and tell her the truth. You're out. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> How hard okay. is that to do? You, you Tell us all the reasons it stinks, by the way. You know, I, I love this girl, but, you know, I can't stand her. I can't stand this girl. I'm going crazy. That's because you're living with her 24-7 now. That's exactly why. It was great when she dropped over to your dorm room or whatever, but uh, now. <sighs> By the way, dorm room, uh, what college are you attending, son? I I dropped out when I married her. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So let's review. You met somebody and you thought the sex was pretty good and she looked pretty hot. Yeah. And you thought you'd never meet anybody that hot again. And it was so important that you bone this chick that you... Uh, that you dropped out of college so you could just bone her all the time. And that's it. And the boning was so constant, you said, you know what, I'm going to marry you because I'm in love. That's exactly why. But in reality, you were not in love, you were in lust. Yeah, you're right. right. I realize I'm living with this chick 24-7. It's kind of... By the crap. way, did she put the gun to your head to marry her? No. All right, mm. So you were afraid that somebody else might bone her. And so you laid claim yeah. to her. Uh, right? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, okay. Um, you, you you weren't concerned about that? Yeah, I was. Yeah. So you 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 pulled out the branding iron and you branded her. Um, no, actually, I did get I got her branded a month before I married her. I got a tattoo. I got her tattoo my name on her. <laughs> <laughs> I know you better than you think. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you, dude. I've been listening to your show for about a month now, and I've learned a lot. And uh, what will your parents say when you admit uh, that you made a mistake? They're going to laugh at me. Of course yeah. they are, because they, let me guess, they told you this was a stupid idea. Yeah. Right. And you thought they were stupid, and you thought, what do they know? Yeah, you know what I thought was right, and... I had to turn the radio off there, Christopher. This is not going to work. All right. Radio off. Radio's off. Yeah. Crap. Uh, so, like I said, I just want to say thank you. Because, uh, you know what, I'm going to um, get my life back together. I'm going to dump this chick. I'm going to go back to school and do my thing. It's about time. Yeah. Like I said, I just want to say thank you. Now, you just man up. You know what? I am. Just tell her it's over. Don't drag this out. You got it, son. All right. All right, man. Good Thanks. luck. Take care. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. Rachel is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, just wanted to call and say that, you know, if there isn't a study done out there about how sex can be good during the rag time and how that can solve so many birds with so many stones, it's not even funny. First off, the chance of um, getting pregnant is zero to none. So that solves all that. Zero to none. That's a wide range. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, but here's the little problem with that plan. Sure, having sex while she's on the rag might relieve some of the problems, but you have to, like, look at her and feel attracted to her when she's being a bitch. Well, you just throw some chocolate in to begin with. Oh, you, throw, you, throw a, you throw a bar of chocolate see, in? See, if you don't well, marry her, you you know, but see, here's the beauty part. If you don't marry her, she could be on the rag all by herself. She, I don't need to be near her, next to her, around her, don't need to see her. 
Don't know what to tell you, Tom. Some of the married guys out there need a little advice. And they need to get need. unmarried or they need to not get married, like that last caller. Yeah, like that last caller. <laughs> but maybe something to survive a couple of months while the divorce papers make it through. Well, uh, the, even then, I, I just marked off my calendar as PMS hell. I kept the calendar just like she did. And the minute I knew PMSL was coming, yeah, that was when I was uh, going out with my friends, drinking, dinners, bowling, whatever, ball games, trips out of town. Anything to get away. But if you were stuck in town and you're stuck with the woman. Well, I'd make sure I wasn't. The, the, well, there's some of us that can't. I've put up with that for the last time. I'm done. <laughs> but. You know, as far as I'm concerned, sex is the number one cramp reliever there is. <laughs> yeah, but you got to have sex with the cramped. But see, everything's tighter then. I don't want to listen to her. I don't want to see her. I don't want to smell her. I don't. I just want to stay away during that time. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, Tom. We had a woman that we once worked with. I'm not going to say where or who she was, but... There was a woman we worked with. You could tell when it was that time of the month. You just walked by her desk. And not only that, everybody knew it. And what she didn't know is that everybody commented on it. Now imagine if this was you and everybody was walking past your desk and they, and when you were out of the room, everybody was bzz, 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 bzz behind your back about that. You know, I, I had a friend that at one point worked in office, and they actually tagged the cubicle. If there was a female in that cubicle on the rag, they tagged it with a red bandana, and everybody knew to stay away. Oh, boy. And that sounds like a sexual harassment <laughs> suit waiting to happen. Didn't matter who in the office. <laughs> making me sick just thinking about it. Hang on a second here, Rachel. Mark, what did you want to say here to Rachel? Well, I want to say first off to Rachel, I don't even know what's going on with Rachel, but the other guy, Tom, is a freaking idiot. The one that got married, only listened to the show for three months. Father, if he would listen to the rules, he would know. That guy is a puss. Can I say he's a, a pussy? He's a pussy? Yes, he's a pussy. Yeah, he's a pussy, Tom. I, don't, I, don't, I, I mean, I just don't get it. I don't get it, Tom. It, it, oh, straight. All right. I think Dean was having some gay daydreams in there. <laughs> Said on the screen that caller wanted to debate Rachel. And, it's, and Dean tells me in my headphones, that's what I thought. Yeah. Well, you were wrong. <laughs> 1 800 5 800 Tom, right? Snuggles is at it again. Let's say hello here to uh, Jennifer on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I just want to say that I am petrified of the list that would come out for the husband's bill of rights after hearing this baloney of a list. It is the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I got the I bill of rights. <laughs> I would never, ever, ever agree to anything like that. That's ridiculous. I'm a woman who would love to please my husband and loves for him to stay around and loves for him to be happy, and I would never complain about giving him sex ever, 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 ever. This is the dumbest list I've ever heard. Oh, yes, you have a right to foreplay. <laughs> Here, tweak <laughs> this. <laughs> Here, touch it, <this>. lick this. <laughs> well, that means he has a right to foreplay, too, then. You just keep working away down there. I'll let you know when I'm ready. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that not all women think that that list is a good idea. Oh, I'm sure good. I'm sure that's true. Otherwise, I, I'd go gay myself. <laughs> well, thanks for putting me on the air. Thanks a lot for your show. It's very entertaining. Thank you, Jennifer. I do it as a public service. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Dreama. Is that your name, Dreama? Yep, Dreama. Dreama. On the top line, you show. Hello. Yes. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. I've been listening to you for two years. 
I've love been it. agreeing with you on most of your things, except for this one. I am the exception. Me and my boyfriend are the exception. Oh, yes. You are the two who know love better than any other two young people who've ever fallen in love. No, 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 no. no. You are the two. While everyone else misunderstands each other, while everybody else is nagging and complaining and whining, you and your boyfriend have redefined the word love because no one else loves like the two of you love each other. It's a love like no other love. It's a very special love. Oh, it, my goodness. It is a love that, yes, our parents said we were crazy, but no, we know what we're doing, me and my boyfriend. <laughs> We love each other. Yeah, Nobody cool. knows love like me and my boyfriend. We are the exceptions to the rule. Let the rest of the world complain about being married or being together, but my boyfriend and I, we are truly in love. People don't even know what love is like we know what love is. When we go to Ikea together looking at credenzas, credenzas people look at us and say, look at those two. They are the exceptions to the rule. They are so in love. Well, I give them and while, all the time. while you're there at Ikea asking questions about the metric system and where you get your Allen wrench, everybody says, I just can't believe these two. Totally, absolutely, head over heels in love. Yet you see couples looking at each other saying, why can't we love like they love, honey? Why can't we have what they have? You don't even like coming to Ikea and looking at bookshelves. You don't even like it. Remember when we used to come to Ikea and we used to look at each other like like those two over there? Those two clearly understand what it means to be in love. They're the exceptions to the rule. We became the rule. How do we become the rule? We're just like everybody else. Why can't we be like those two over there looking into each other's eyes with a total understanding of every want, need, desire? And now we are here fighting with each other about whether we're going to get cushions for our outdoor chairs. You used to love me like that. You used to look at me like that. But no, they are the two exceptions to the rule. They are the people who define love. <laughs> That's funny, Dom. Is that what it's like? Well, it's pretty close, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure it is. Because <laughs> you're 23, darling, and you haven't had a chance to learn yet. But Oh, my goodness. You will learn. Tell you, you I will learn. a lot of stuff over the years. I'm very independent. I've always worked for myself. Yes, you're so independent, you need a boyfriend. No, I want a boyfriend. I don't need a boyfriend. I want a boyfriend. Well, then you're not they independent. Me. They, they really I'm independent. Me. When I go home tonight, I'm going to make dinner for myself. I'm independent. Hey, that'd be nice. I'm going to I, stick I my clothes in the washing machine tonight because I'm independent. Well, I... That, you when know it comes that, time to make the mortgage payment this month, I'm not going to turn around and say to somebody, I want my 50%. You, I pay 50%, you pay 50%. What? I'm not <laughs> no, going to be... all equal. <laughs> I'm not going to be like that ex-girlfriend I had who billed me 32 cents because I had a glass of milk. That's crazy, Tom. That's See, I'm right. not that chick. I am not crazy like that. If uh, you know, if it's over, it's over. That's it. I'm not feeling you for nothing. You better not feel me for nothing. <laughs> you know, must be great to have that unique understanding of what it's like to be in love. It is nice, it's, and you know, we're planning. <laughs> we're wanting to get married. Oh, I'll bet you are. That's when the real fun begins. That.